Welcome back to the CryptoBot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, the fourth Bitcoin halving just confirmed as multiple rare signals are flashing on the Bitcoin chart. So I'll be talking about that in just a moment alongside Ethereum and Solana still playing out these short-term bullish signals. So I'll be talking about all of that and more later in the video. So definitely watch to the end. First of all, we need to talk about the Bitcoin halving because just over the last one day, we have now seen the fourth Bitcoin halving officially take place. And so this now means the block reward for mining Bitcoin blocks has changed from 6.25 Bitcoin down to 3.125 Bitcoin, basically being mined per block. And so this simply means there's less Bitcoin coming into circulation, which essentially lowers Bitcoin's inflation rate. Because just yesterday, before the halving, Bitcoin's inflation rate was roughly around 1.7% per year. Whereas right now, after the latest Bitcoin halving, the fourth Bitcoin halving ever, we can see that Bitcoin's inflation rate right now is around 0.85% per year. And how we actually get to that number is simply taking all of the new Bitcoin coming into circulation in a single year based on the current rate of inflation, the current block reward, and then dividing that new Bitcoin coming into circulation over one year, dividing that by the total circulating supply of Bitcoin, which is currently around 0.85% per year inflation rate. And so with the latest Bitcoin halving over the last one day, this has officially dropped Bitcoin's inflation rate below the inflation rate of gold, which technically means Bitcoin is now more scarce than gold because it's now harder to obtain new Bitcoin than it is to obtain new gold. And the difference is if the price of gold rapidly increases, then that is going to incentivize more people to go out and mine more gold, which actually increases gold's inflation rate if the price significantly increases. Because obviously, if the gold price increases, mining gold becomes more profitable, so more people go ahead and do it. But no matter how high the price of Bitcoin goes, you cannot mine more Bitcoin than this inflation rate. It is strictly limited. And so also due to that reason as well, it is becoming harder and harder to obtain new Bitcoin, to mine new Bitcoin, now to the point where it's even harder to mine new Bitcoin than it is to mine new gold based on the inflation rate relative to their circulating supply. And with Bitcoin, this only gets better and better as time goes on with the inflation rate approaching 0% after all of the Bitcoin halvings. And we can see on this chart right here, this is Bitcoin's inflation rate since the beginning. Obviously, it was extremely high right at the beginning because there was basically no circulating supply and all of the Bitcoin was coming strictly through inflation, through inflating the supply. But over time, as the supply becomes circulating and less and less Bitcoin is actually being mined into circulation, of course, that reduces the inflation inflation rate. And we can see roughly every four years, there's a big step down in the inflation rate. And those are the Bitcoin halvings. And so basically, as time goes on, Bitcoin becomes only more and more scarce, which is bullish for the price. If something becomes harder to obtain, usually that makes it very valuable, like for example, gold, and especially for Bitcoin. And we can actually see this playing out throughout Bitcoin's history in the Bitcoin price right here. We can see all of the Bitcoin halvings throughout Bitcoin's history so far. Once again, there have now been four Bitcoin halvings with the latest halving being the fourth halving. And so far throughout Bitcoin's history, every single Bitcoin halving has led to a major increase in the price of Bitcoin over the next one year approximately following the Bitcoin halving. And now, obviously, when it comes to markets, there's no such thing as a guarantee. But with that being said, throughout Bitcoin's history and based on what the halving actually is fundamentally speaking, the most likely outcome over the next one year, give or take, is simply a continued bull market here on the larger timeframes in the price of Bitcoin. And so ultimately, nothing has really changed here on the larger timeframes. I'm still extremely bullish when we're looking at the bigger picture. But obviously, during a bull market, we can see short term pullbacks here and there. So just keep that in mind. And just before getting into some other important Bitcoin charts, first giving you a quick update on the Bitcoin ETF news today. And on Friday, we saw a decent net inflow of nearly $60 million. And so obviously seeing a net inflow is good after we saw a few days of net outflows. And in case you're new to all of this, basically all you need to know about the inflows and outflows from the Bitcoin ETFs is net outflows basically means selling pressure, which is bearish. And net inflows basically means buying pressure, which is bullish. 
And so that's why it's a good thing to see a decent net inflow. But ultimately, if we're seeing less than 100 million inflow or outflows, that doesn't really have a major effect on the price. But if we start seeing, for example, three, four, five hundred million dollar net inflows in a single day or even bigger than that, then that can have a significant impact on the price of Bitcoin. But anyway, getting into some other Bitcoin charts today, looking at the three day time frame. Of course, the candlesticks right here are the Bitcoin price. And this green line right here is the USDT market cap. And I talked more about this chart in my last video here on the channel, but basically when the USDT market cap increases, that increases liquidity in the crypto ecosystem, which is bullish for Bitcoin and crypto. And we can actually see on this chart right here that the USDT market cap and the Bitcoin price often line up very well. They are very correlated. And what we are seeing right now in the charts is a pullback in the price of Bitcoin over the last one to two weeks or so. Meanwhile, the USDT market cap is rapidly increasing. Increasing. And so once again, we usually end up seeing the price of Bitcoin simply catch up to wherever the USDT market cap is, which is suggesting we could potentially soon see a major recovery back to the upside. And if we're taking a look at this three day Bitcoin chart, of course, the pullback so far from high to low from the all time high to the lowest point, at least as of right now, has been around a 19% pullback from high to low. And so once again, this is very normal price action to see even during a bull market. So basically, if we're seeing something close to a 20% pullback from high to low, often they are great buying opportunities to buy cheap Bitcoin, especially when we're in a bull market, not financial advice. And if we're taking a look at the daily Bitcoin chart, this is the Bitcoin price in the candlesticks. And this red line, in case you're new to the channel, is the DXY, also known as the US dollar index. And basically, all you really need to know about the DXY is usually when the DXY is bearish, that is bullish for Bitcoin and crypto. And usually when the DXY is bullish, that is often bearish or at least neutral for Bitcoin and crypto. And over the last few weeks, we've seen a major move to the upside in the DXY, which is one of the reasons as to why we've seen the price of Bitcoin somewhat struggle over the last few weeks. But what we are now seeing in the DXY, at least just over the last few days, is potentially a bit of a pullback beginning. We're already starting to see a pullback in the DXY from the local high. And basically, if this pullback continues into a further pullback, then that can be a bullish reversal signal for Bitcoin and crypto here in the short term. And so as always, I'll make sure to keep you up to date on what's happening here in the DXY and many other important Bitcoin and crypto charts. And so make sure you subscribe to this channel with notifications turned on and click all for notifications so that you don't miss out on any of these important update videos. And if we're taking a look at this daily Bitcoin chart, we can see the continued bounce in the price of Bitcoin from this exact area of support that I've been talking about here on the channel. Once again, in between around 61,000 to 62,000. And so over the last one day, nothing has really changed on this daily Bitcoin chart. And if we're zooming further into the short term, looking at the four hour time frame, of course, over the last few days or so, we've seen this bullish divergence pattern, this bullish signal actually play out here in the short term. And obviously, I've been talking about this bullish divergence since all the way back down here. And basically around here, I said it's officially confirmed and now playing out. And so back then, around two to three days ago, I said that it's very likely that over the next few days, we're going to see either a bullish relief or at the very least, some choppy sideways price action. Basically, I would no longer expect this bearish price action in the short term over the next few days due to this bullish divergence now playing out. And obviously, over the last few days, so far, we've seen this exact exactly play out as expected. And I do continue to expect this to continue to play out at least over the next day or so, possibly over the weekend. But we have to keep in mind other levels of support and resistance. First of all, we have this area of support, once again, in between 61 to 62,000 with some support at around 60,000. And as for short term resistance right now and over the last one day or so, we've been running into this area of resistance where we have been struggling at as expected, once again, sitting in between around 65 to 66,000. 
But if we start successfully breaking out above 66,000, then in that case, we could run up towards around 68 to 69,000. And above that area, the next significant resistance is at around 71 and a half thousand. And if you want to trade these moves in the price of Bitcoin or any other crypto, personally, I trade those moves over on Bybit. So I'll make sure to leave a link to Bybit in the description down below and in the pinned comment. And if you use that link down below this video to make a Bybit account and deposit on that account, you can get up to a $30,000 deposit bonus, but only if you use that link down below this video. And also, if you use that link, it'll take you to this page right here where you can claim an exclusive 200 USDT airdrop position. And so if you're going to be trading crypto anyway you might as well check this out once again first link down below this video to claim those extra bonuses but for whatever reason if you cannot access bybit or if you cannot kyc on bybit there is also bitflex which is another crypto exchange similar to bybit but you don't need kyc for bitflex and so i'll also make sure to leave a link to bitflex down below this video as an alternative crypto exchange and if we're taking a quick look at the Bitcoin liquidation heat map, we can still see a major area of liquidity to the upside in between around 65.6k to around 66,000. And we have another area of liquidity in between around 66.9k going up towards around 67.4k. And so at least in the short term, those are some potential price targets to pay attention to because usually the price of Bitcoin moves towards where there's most liquidity. And as I've been saying over the last few days, especially if we take out some of these levels of liquidity, basically what that means is they're going to be liquidating a lot of short positions in those regions. And so that could potentially trigger a short squeeze, which is bullish for the price if we start breaking out above this resistance, for example, and hitting those liquidity areas. And one of the main reasons as to why I'm talking about a short squeeze and why I've talked about a short squeeze over the last couple of days is due to the funding rates looking extremely negative. Right now, a lot of the funding rates are below neutral. And basically, this is a major ingredient for a short squeeze because it tells us a lot of traders in the market are looking to short the market and not a lot of people are looking to long the market. And so that imbalance is getting to the point where the short traders, the short positions are having to pay these funding rates as an extra fee to the long positions. And so this is basically incentivizing people to get out of short positions and get into long positions, even while a lot of people are trying to short the market right now. And so once again, this can lead to a short squeeze, forcing a lot of traders out of their short positions. And when short positions close, they have to buy back into the underlying asset. So if they're shorting Bitcoin and they close that position or get liquidated out of that short position, they're essentially having to buy back into Bitcoin, which pushes the price further to the upside, which is bullish. And so if we're seeing those short-term pullbacks or those quick moves to the downside, don't be fooled to enter a massive short position and get trapped in bearish price action because at the moment we are seeing multiple bullish signals flash on the chart and now playing out as I've been saying since all the way back down here. And if we're taking a look at Ethereum on the weekly time frame right now, we are still bouncing from that exact level of support that I've been talking about over and over again here on the channel, sitting at around 2.9k. And so as of right now, nothing has really changed on the weekly time frame for Ethereum over the last one day. So zooming into the short term, looking at the eight hour time frame, and we can see this bullish divergence is still playing out exactly as expected. Obviously, I've been talking about this bullish divergence since all the way back down here, basically saying we're most likely going to see either a bullish relief or at the very least a sideways consolidation as the most likely outcomes over the next few days. And I do expect this bullish divergence to continue to play out over the next few days because it's on the eight hour time frame. And so potentially over the weekend, we could still see this bullish relief continue or at least a bit of a consolidation, perhaps when we start running into this area of resistance. And as for support and resistance, these levels have not changed over the last one day. So if you're new to the channel as you want to know what these areas of support and resistance actually are, then check out my last video here on the channel. And something similar can be said for Solana also on the eight hour time frame. Obviously, this bullish divergence is still playing out exactly as expected. Like I've been saying since all the way back down here, I expect either a bullish relief in the short term or at the very least a sideways consolidation, basically no more bearish price action or significant bearish momentum, at least in the short term here. 
And so obviously over the last few days, this is already playing out exactly as expected. And I continue to expect this to play out at least over the next one to two days or so, potentially over the weekend. And as for support and resistance, we have this area of support, which we've bounced from recently multiple times, sitting in between 120 to 127. And as for short-term resistance, we're right now running into this resistance at around 150 to 155. And above that, we have more resistance in between around 167 to 172. And if you want to trade these moves in the price of Solana or any other crypto, once again, check out those links down below this video if you want to claim those extra bonuses. And if you want to actually know how to trade crypto, no matter if the price is bullish, bearish, or chopping around sideways, then make sure to watch these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how you can profit from bullish or bearish price action using long positions or short positions. And the video in the bottom left shows you how you can easily profit from choppy sideways price action. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next video.